Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 22. Day number 22. 3022, 3003 signifies the fact that it's the third edition, third edition, day 22. We are on page number 172. Please turn to it, page 172. On page 172, you will see problem number 4, and on the next page, you will see problem number 5. Problem number 4 and problem number 5 are the two problems that we are going to do in this video. These, these two problems that you see there, problem 4 and problem 5, are the exact same problems that have already appeared in the previous two editions of the book. In my hand, hold, I'm holding the first edition. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, which are done at a little, which are done at a little bit of a slower pace, you will find the original solutions on day number 71 and 72. Day number 71 and 72. Let's turn to it. Let's turn to problem number four. It says, for which of the eight years, for which of the eight years, you have to have the book in front of you. Otherwise, it is not going to work. You're going to need to read the problem yourself and you're going to have to look at the chart, the graph that is given to us, the chart that is given to us in the book. I'm not going to reproduce on the, on the blackboard. It will take forever. It says, for which of the eight years from 2001, for which of the eight years from 2001 to 2008 did the export, did the export, EX stands for export, exceed the imports, I am for imports, by more than 5 billion. So what we're going to do is, Instead of simply looking at the graph, instead of simply looking at the graph one year at a time, we're going to actually, and then keeping track of one year at a time, we're going to actually take down all the readings first for all the eight years. Keep in mind, keep in mind that the graph shows the, the values, the figures, beginning with year 2000. The question is asking us for an eight year period from 2001 to 2008. We have to ignore, we have to remember to ignore the first year that is shown in the graph and the last year. The story begins with 2001. So here we go. So the, they give you eight choices for eight years, and our job is to mark all the years where the export exceed, exceeded the imports by more than five billion dollars. So here we go. So let's put down the answer choices here: A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. We have 2001. We have 2002. 2003. 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, and 2008. Now we're going to go to our chart and make a note of all the exports for these years. Again, as I, as I, as I put the figures on the blackboard, your job is to look at the graph and make sure that you are able to confirm, verify the figure that I'm putting, figures that I'm putting on the blackboard that will show that you're reading the graph properly. For 2001, you will see that the exports were about, well not about it, they were 10, 10 billion dollars. For 2002, they are 13 billion dollars. For 2003, they were 14 billion dollars. In 2004, they were a little under 9 billion dollars. If you look at 2004, you will see that the exports are just under 9 billion. And the same is true for 2005. 2006, you will see that the exports are a little under 16 billion dollars. That's how we write it, little under 16 billion dollars. In 2007, the exports are shown to be a little over $12 billion. 2008, they are shown to be $11 billion. So those are exports. Let's look at the, let's look at the second graph, the, second, the one with the dotted line. And dotted line shows the imports for each of these eight years, beginning with 2001. In 2001, our imports were a little under $2 billion. Next year, they are a little over $3 billion. Then they are a little under $4 billion. Then 4 billion again for 2004. In 2000, 2005, they are shown to be 5 billion. 2006, they are a little under 6 billion. And, and where are these figures coming from? From the chart, obviously. And for 2007, the imports are shown to be a little bit more than 5 billion. And, and for last year, they are shown to be 6 billion. Oh, I, I, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Let me start again. The, for 2007, the imports are shown to be 7 billion, and 
5 billion for 2008. Now we can figure out for how many years it exceeded by more than 5 billion. Well, the exports were 10 billion, the imports were a little under 2 billion, that's a difference of a little over 8 billion. Exports were 13 billion, the imports were more than 3 billion, the difference is going to be a little under 10 billion. So this column shows the exports minus the imports. Following year, the exports were 14 billion, the imports were a little under 4 billion, so it's going to be the difference is going to be a little over, little over 10 billion. The exports were a little under 9 billion, but we imported 4 billion, so the, the net exports were a little under 5 billion, little under 5 billion. Make sure you keep track of this thing. The following year, the exports were about the same amount, a little under 9 billion, but the imports were 5 billion. So our net exports were a little under 4 billion. This net export, as I just called it, or export minus import, or sometimes it is simply referred to as trade surplus. We don't need to know that for the exam, but that's what it is called in economics. It is described as, as trade surplus. Trade surplus simply means the surplus of exports over the imports. How much more exports do you have compared to your imports? And if it turns out that you, have, you are importing more than what you are exporting, then you say that we have a negative trade surplus. That's how, it, that's how one speaks. 2006, the exports were a little under 16 billion, the imports were a little under 6 billion, so the net is going to be around 10. Following year, we exported more than 12 billion, little more than 12 billion, our imports were about 7 billion, so our net exports were about little more than 5. And finally, the next year we exported 11 billion dollars worth of goods, we imported 5 billion dollars worth of goods, our net exports were about 6. That's it. And our job simply now is to locate all the years, all the years where we exported more than $5 billion more than what we imported. It says for which of the following eight years did the export exceed the import by more than $5 billion? Now here's the first year. It exceeded more than, more than $5 billion here, the first year. So that one works. A works. That one, B, B works. It's more than $5 billion. There is C. That works. This is not, D is not going to work. D is not the answer. D is not the answer. Neither is E. E does not work. That's more than 5. This is more than 5 and this is more than 5. F, G and H. So it turns out the answers are, the answers are everything, everything except these two years. D does not work and E does not work. Right here. D does not work and E does not work. Everything else. A, B, C and then B and E are gone, F, G and H. Those are the six years that we have to mark and you make sure that our job is to make sure that we mark all six of these years because if you only mark five out of six obviously we're not going to get five six of the credit. It's, it's, it's all or nothing. So these problems are tricky. They have many many answer choices and sometimes they give you as many as ten answer choices. Here we only had eight. Sometimes they give you as many as ten answer choices and they ask you which of the following is the correct answer and you have to mark all of them. Sometimes there are only three or four right answers. Sometimes there are as many as seven or eight. Do you understand? Let's do the next one, number five. Problem number five. Problem number five is on the next page actually. Let's see what problem, problem five says. It says, what is the What is the approximate, again they're looking for approximate average of the nine changes in the values of imports what is the approximate average of the nine changes in the values of imports? I think we are done with this thing, we don't need it anymore.
what is the average what is the approximate average of the what is the approximate average of the nine changes in the values of imports from 2000 to 2009 the first thing we need to understand is that first thing we need to understand is, is the fact that from 2000 to 2009 is a period of 10 years not 9 years from 2000 to 2009 is a period of 10 years and these 10 years are going to generate 9 changes for example for example if you go from the year 2001 to 2003 from 2001 to 2003 is not we're not going to see three changes first change we're going to see is from 2001 to 2002 that's the first change second change we're going to see is the figure what was the figure in 2002 and what what did it end up with the diff, the, the change from 2002 to 2003 that's the second change so we go from 2001 to 2003, that generates two changes. Similarly here, a period of 10 years will give us nine changes. And the question is very simple. The question simply is, what was the average change? What was the average change here? You see, it simply says, if you want to rewrite this question, it simply says, what was the average change? That's what they are asking for. What's the average change? There were nine changes. What's the average of these changes? Well, how do you find the average of something? To find the average of the changes, the average change, the average change, just like any average, is simply going to be the sum of all the changes, sum of all the nine changes over nine. And that's how we find the average, sum of all the nine changes over nine. Well, let's see what the sum of the changes is, shall we? Let's look at some of the changes first. So that's what we're looking for. We're going to figure out the sum of all the changes. The sum of all the nine changes is what we're trying to figure out. Okay, let's begin, shall we? The first change, the first change we're going to see is the imports in year 2001 minus the imports in two, year 2000. I1, I, I1 stands for imports, imports of imports in 2001. I0 is pronounced, it's read as I0. I0 is the imports in year 2000. I3 would be imports in year 2003 and you get the idea. So the first change is what was the imports in year 2001? What was the import in year 2000? That's the first change. That's how much the imports change from 2000 to 2001. Second, second change is going to be what was the import in year 2002 and what was the import in year 2001? That's the second change. The third change is going to be What was the imports in year 2003 and what was it in 2002? And so on and so forth. And so on and so forth. What was the import in 2008 minus what was the ch change in 2007? And finally, what was, the ch what was the import in 2009 minus what was the imports the year before that? Some of all these nine changes. The question is how do we go about calculating them? Do we look at the chart? Do we look at the chart, chart and, and, and read the imports for each of the year? What was the imports in the year 2000? What was the imports in 2001? Take the difference and keep track of it. That's our first change. What was the imports in year 2002 minus what was the imports in year 2001 from the chart? Do we read those figures and, and subtract the two and then make, make a note of it? That's our second change. And keep doing it until we have the nine changes and then divide that figure by nine. Well, we could do that obviously and it will give us the answer obviously but that will take an ordinate amount of time that will take an ordinate amount of time we're not going to do that we're not going to do that we have a quicker way if you were to do the, the, the way we just described that will end up taking an ordinate amount of time what we need to understand here is that if you look at the math if you look at the math as it appears here, what do we notice? We notice that we have 
the imports of year 2001 here. And here we have the same figure with a negative sign. They're going to cancel each other out. Let's look at another one in a different color. Here we have the imports for year 2002. And here we have the same figure with a negative sign. This figure and this figure, they're going to cancel out. Similarly, year 2003 appears here. But when we go to the next change, we're going to have imports for year 2004 minus the import of year 2003. Minus the imports of year 2003, that figure will cancel out this figure. Somewhere here. We have imports for year 2008. And we have the same figure here with the negative sign. This figure will cancel out that figure. And similarly, here we see the negative of your uh, negative figure of the uh, imports in year 2007. But right, right before it, here, this, the change before this one was imports in 2007 minus the imports in 2006. This figure and this positive figure will cancel out also. I'm not, I'm not going to put it here, but it's going to go away. What are we left with at the end? What are we left with at the end? What we are left with is the final figure, 2009, the imports in 2009, minus the initial figure. There you go. And that represents the sum of all the changes. That represents the sum of all the changes. And it makes perfect sense if you think for a second. The sum of all the changes simply should be, what was the final figure? And where did you start from? The final figure is 2009. Where did we start from? What was your first observation? Well, that's the imports into year 2000. The difference in the two figures should represent the final change. The, not the final change, rather. Should represent the total change in all the figures. It makes perfect sense. Do you understand? That's, that's how the total change was. The imports change. What was the total change in, in the imports? Well, look at the chart. Whatever it was that we started out with, what we ended up with. That's the, that difference in the two figures is the total change in the imports. That's what the math shows us. We have that. We are not just, we're not interested in figuring out the sum. We want to find the average change. We want to find the, the average change. Well, every change is simply going to be sum divided by 9. That's it. That's our answer. What was the imports in 2009? Well, look at the chart and tell me. What was the imports in 2009? You will find that the imports in 2009 was $9 billion. What was the imports in year 2000? Imports in year 2000 was a little over $3 billion. That's the change. We're going to divide that change by 9. Nine billion dollars minus little over three billion dollars is going to be little under six billion dollars divided by nine. Six divided by nine is nine is two third. So it turns out that the average change in imports was around two third of a billion dollars. Around that, that minus sign is not what I want to put here. The average change in imports. The average change in imports, the average change in imports over a period of nine years, over a period of over a period of ten years rather, the average change, the average change in imports over a period of ten years, which generates nine changes, which is why we're dividing by nine. So the average change was simply little under two thirds of a billion dollars. Little under two thirds of a billion dollars. Let's continue this part here. Two thirds of a billion dollars little under two-third of a billion dollars. Well, two-third of, two of a billion dollars is approximately approximately six hundred and sixty-six million dollars over three. Oh, sorry, not three, that's it. Two-third of, two of a billion dollars two-third of a billion dollars is about six hundred and six hundred and six, let's just put it six hundred and sixty billion dollars. Six hundred and sixty million dollars. Let's just keep it simple. I was going to put down 666, but we don't have to be so, so pedantic. We don't have to be so accurate. That's it. Two-thirds of a billion dollars, two-thirds of a billion dollars, approximately 660 million dollars. 
we look at the answer choices now we're going to pick the one that comes closest to it to 666 200 660 million dollars is what we're looking for there you go 640 answer choice e says 640 million dollars which is as close to which is as close to two-thirds of a billion dollars that we're going to get the average change in the imports was we just found out about two-thirds of a billion dollars two-thirds of a billion dollars that was it I'll see you tomorrow in the next video we'll do problem number six and seven in the next video okay in, in, on day number today is day number 22 on day number 23 we'll do problem number six and seven those same problems appeared in the previous edition which you will find the solutions on day number 73 and 74. Bye now.